Uh, uh, you are watching the number one podcast in the whole YouTube wrestling community, and I'm one of your hosts, Juan. And I'm your other host, Jean Paul Leek. And together we are Raw Break Family Monday Night Raw. Very uh, eventful night, Jean Paul, and uh, lots of news. Lots of yep. news. Uh, and you were just saying to me, not a bad show. It was actually pretty decent. Maybe some tweaks here and there. But uh, we're going to be talking about everything. Well, you know, how do you feel about this Monday Night Raw? You don't feel uh, as like pissed off as a... No, normal. I mean, yeah, this definitely wasn't awful. I mean, Rey Mysterio and Aleister Black miraculously came back from the dead. So that's pretty cool. We got the return of the Iconics. And that actually, to me, wasn't a bad thing. Because, I mean, we needed tag teams. And it's like, oh, they're awful. They're this or that. But it's like... Considering how bad a lot of other stuff is, it's like, eh, you know, maybe they're not so awful anymore. If so. there's so much bad, you know, we can add more bad and it wouldn't even make any difference. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, the big announcement from Becky Lynch, which we'll get into right when we start the review. But, exactly. I mean, it was a great – it was – considering what we saw the past couple of weeks, I would say it was a pretty good Monday Night Raw. But there was, like you said, some little things here or there where it's like – yeah. Like, what are you doing? They can they can tweak it, but, you know, like, we're going to be talking about every single thing. Thank you for watching every single one of the videos, family, all the new subscriptions, all ones, everybody. Thank you so much for so much support throughout this, like, weekend because we had previous predictions with Money in the Bank. We had Money in the Bank reviews. I'm pulling myself talking about money, every money, single money, thing. Money. That's right. And also, like, I just had, like, the Spanish version of it, just talking about everything, every same thing that we did with Jean Paul in just the Spanish language. So thank you so very much for every single one of those things. So Jean Paul, Monday Night Raw, opens up with like Becky Lynch. I told you in the in the afternoon, early afternoon, I says, there's some room, room happening. There's some rumors going on. And Jean Paul is like, okay, they will tell me. So we were discussing this and, you were, and we were like, mm, maybe not take this with a grain of salt. But in the end, Becky Lynch has a big announcement to make. Let's for the record, Jean Paul, the show was staked. So everything was already, like, they already recorded it. So that's why, like, I guess, like, the rumor already kind of spilled out. Because you're yeah. not going to be able to keep it, you know, if you have employees knowing about this. So oh, that's yeah. why, like, there was already people saying that, hey, something big is going to happen. So Becky Lynch came out. She pretty much has the money in the bank briefcase. And then she's saying that she's about to go, that she can no longer compete. And then she had Asuka come out. And then Asuka, well, she's like, what the hell, my briefcase and everything is like, well, you didn't fight to win the briefcase. This match was actually for the Raw Women's Championship. So, you know, Jean-Paul and I are like, eee! so that means that like she's the new women's champion and Asuka becomes the best wrestler in the world. And, you know, many people will say, Charlotte, no, 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 no. Asuka is the most complete wrestler till this day. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at that list they sent you. Now, Raw Women's Champ, SmackDown Women's Champ, NXT Women's Champ. She has the longest undefeated streak in WWE history, which also means the longest, pretty much the longest championship, you know, reign in history, or at least one of them. And the, I think it's the longest in the modern. It was, or at least, I don't know if it beats CM no, or Lesnar. No, it doesn't somebody, beat but, CM Punk, but yeah. also as a woman. Or maybe for the like women. The second longest. The second yeah, longest yeah. in women's. Yes. And then yes. the tag team champ. So she's a Grand Slam, Royal Rumble winner, Soul Survivor at Survivor Series, and now Money in the Bank. So, I mean, she's pretty much done anything and everything you can do. So, I mean, like you said, I agree with you with that. So the announcement from Becky Lynch. You know, it was awesome. Congrats to Becky Lynch, you know, and Seth Rollins. I mean, that's cool for them. Well, well what did she say? What did Becky announce? Well, well I mean, they, they, they kind of, Tom Phillips, he was pretty much in our boat because later on he did say the, the P word. Yeah. And, and then he got his wrist slapped real quick and he, he went back to the E word, which I guess though is in WWE's dictionary, expecting. I don't know what she's expecting. Mm -hmm. Usually when I watch Friday nights, I'm expecting a bullshit. Yes. But, you know, she she didn't really say. She pretty much said, like, you're going to fight Asuka because, you know, I can't. Or, you know, and what she, what did she say? Something about, like... Well, she said, you're going to you're gonna go ahead and be a warrior, and I'm uh -huh. going to go and be a mother. Yeah, that so was Pretty it. much that was, like, the spill in the news. Becky Lynch is pregnant by the Monday Night Messiah. So, like, mm -hmm. we, you know, we can say that, actually, Jesus got somebody pregnant. So, like, he's actually bad for, like, the Catholic, <laughs> Catholics over there in the world now. 
Uh, Becky Lynch is pregnant. Then congratulations to both Seth Rollins mm -hmm. and her. So she's going to be pretty much leaving uh, the wrestling scene. She's going to like she's going to be due in December. And, yeah, and, and so she, I mean, she's going to be out for for a while. So yes. it's like it's one of those things where, you know, so December if she gives birth, you know, Women's Royal Rumble. I don't know how long the maternity maternity leave is and all that other stuff, you know, but maybe she comes back for the Royal Rumble. That would be something cool. Yep. But we'll see. So it will be, I will say maybe if everything goes back to normal, correct? Because we don't know what yeah, the situation yeah, is. Exactly. But if everything plays it out, like it's supposed to be played out, I will say most likely for WrestleMania, just because like you said, December and then the Royal Rumble is like right mm -hmm. around the corner. So it's not enough time for her to train, you know, get, oh, get yeah, in yeah. ring shape, all of those things. So maybe WrestleMania will be really cool for everybody. Oh and of yeah. Course, and, and then the Messiah will be like, you know, hey, da, 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 mommy, mommy's kicking ass. So all of that. So that Jean Paul, like that was like really great news for her. Uh, for a lot of Becky's fans and a lot of uh, people that love the women's division, this is going to be a little bit of a take back just because see a lot of storylines that were planted, maybe the return for Ronda Rousey, like a possible the horse women from UFC against the horse women from WWE. So those things are going to be on hold for now. But at least we have some redemption in Asuka. Asuka yeah. is finally the Raw Women's Champion. She was celebrating. And then, of course, she celebrated with Becky. They broke kayfabe, you know, like with capital words because everybody's mm. talking and everybody's just congratulating Becky. So I will say a very uh, warming and, you know, opening segment for Monday Night Raw. Oh, yeah. Like you said, it was definitely like it because you and I both really, you know, we don't really care for Becky so much, or at least recently. And seeing her here kind of humanized her and it wasn't like – the character Becky Lynch, it was, you know, the real person. I think it's, I forget what her name is. I think it's a Rebecca song, but anyway. Um, so we saw like the real, you know, Becky Lynch here. So that was nice. You know, she's going away and we know when she returns, we'll be like, eee, we'll be like, this is legit when she comes back because she was kind of getting like sour and boring. But like you said that, you know, they broke kayfabe. I thought that was cool, but you know, there was all these celebrations and these returns. And then I just love how we see Rey Mysterio. He's like, oh, from one parent to another. I'm like, dude, you were supposed to be dead. How are you yeah. here? Yeah. And, and yeah, there was a lot of people that thought that like they actually were dead. So there were a lot of people that were saying like, how the hell is he alive? People, they had like a big, uh, uh, they had like a big, um, you know, like where, where you just bounce, you know, like mm -hmm. a, and right by like all, all the way like to, to the to the side of the building so they had like a little like a, i think oh like yeah they probably had like a net or something there yeah, to they like patch like them, yeah, but they, they but yeah story story, like story line right yeah storyline they were like oh there was a, a second roof or a second whatever yeah. that was like six feet because there like were, when yeah there were pictures on paul that you see the net you know uh -huh. because even yeah. when they did like a cameo of the whole like for you know from from like the helicopter or whatever they went taking uh -huh. the cameo to like the where the ring was and everything you could see like the net Oh, so yeah. Even people were posting on social media, like, really, WWE? Can you at least hide these things? But like you said, Rey Mysterio is alive for what is worth and is legit mm -hmm. from one parent to the other. So that was like the, on the opening segment. Uh, very happy for Ask. You know, it's yeah. a very, is redemption. The girl deserves this and more. All the times that she has been screwed up, this is some redemption for her. And, you know, you and me are happy because the girl, she's probably the best wrestler in the world today. You know, I don't care what they say about Charlotte. Charlotte has her time in the sun when it comes to Asuka. Asuka is a legit wrestler. So oh, yeah. If he has this opportunity more than ever. Definitely. Because if, she's, this is the time for her to shine, though. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Out. You got to yeah, you gotta have her shine. You got to present her that she can be presented, not have her go out there, which sometimes I laugh, but the... Yeah, not anymore. Like we gotta, you yeah, know, now it's got to be, yep. You know, Empress of Tomorrow, all of, the, you know, all of the legit things. So that's what they need to be. And Becky said to all of us, I'm going to miss you guys. So that was the first segment, Jean Paul. And then we go to like a no disqualification match. Bobby Lashley going against Humberto Carrillo. So this match was pretty quick. And like mm -hmm. you said, it was a spot that like this, the drop kick, right? You mentioned yeah. that, the drop kick. Carrillo had like semi decent showing, I will say. Yeah, because it was a no DQ. So he kind of like threw the chair in his face and then he like drop kicked it. So like that was legit because, I mean, you saw the camera angle. I mean, that thing definitely hit Lashley in the face. That wasn't like a, oh, like six inches away from hitting me in the face. No, that definitely clipped him. But so that was good. We're like, you know, we, you texted me. We both agreed Bobby Lashley had to win this. 
Oh yeah, it's yeah. And we said Carlos, this in yeah. the we said in previous predictions. We said this like last night. So we're not you know coming up with like you know like completely like uh, uh, like far fetched things. We're mm -hmm. not coming up with anything new here. We said the guy they're trying to push him. They're trying to like give him another opportunity, and this yeah. is the route that they're gonna go. Mm -hmm. And also like he debuted it like a new kind of like finisher. He did the master's lock or the full mm -hmm. Nelson. Yeah. But it's like the master lock, the Arnold and Chris Masters for the ones that like used to watch on 06, talking about SummerSlam 06. I'm just hinting of something. But like yeah, that Chris Masters used to do the master lock. And that's how he beat uh, Umberto Carrillo. Lashley is the guy here. I think that with all the situations, because at some point Seth Rollins is gonna have to go too. Right? I mean, I don't know if he'll leave. I mean, he might be out for like they, Seth Rollins, I don't think he'll be out for any longer than like a week, maybe two weeks. What, what's he going to do? I mean, he'll help Becky Lynch, but you know her parents, I don't know if they still live in Ireland or if they live over here, where they live, but I'm sure there's family that can come and help her. So it's like, oh, Seth, you know, still go wrestle, still do this and that, you know. WWE will probably say, okay, Seth, do your thing for Monday Night Raw and then obviously go back home. So it's not like he's going to have to be hanging around all the time. So you could easily do something where he gets his ass kicked, injury, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, and you know, like we we will see some what, what's going on in that development. But I see mm -hmm. good stuff for Bobby Lashley. Finally, they're doing something. And see, that's the good thing about this whole pandemic is like you're you're trying to give people different opportunities. So oh, that's yeah. that's important. So that's good. that was good for Lashley. He gets the win on Berto Carrillo. Out of the whole Hispanic gang. He's the one in the lowest, the lowest end of the stick. That's Sammy. Anyway, I mean, it's like, do you know, okay, he's pretty much in the United States Championship hunt. It's like, okay, legit, legit. Andrade is done, you know, suspended. And it's like, Humberto, okay. Then he's hurt or whatever the hell happened. Now, you know, all the pieces are back in place. You think he's going to pick up where he left off? Nope. No, nope. So, like, uh, Bobby Lashley is the one getting pushed right now, family. Mm -hmm. So, we go with the street foul, his jump Paul. They cut a promo backstage saying that they're better than the Viking Raiders. They said they're going to beat the Raiders in a basketball game tonight. I'm like, this is not the NBA. It's professional wrestling or sports entertainment. So, mm -hmm. okay, whatever. So, we then see, like, the Raiders, and they don't understand why they have to play basketball. And then Eric asked why they didn't choose something cool like sword fighting or like people throwing. So then Ivar asked if it will help if they sing karaoke. And Eric says, no. <laughs> and then Ivar says that like they just have to be aggressive. But Eric says that it's such, such a thing as like false. And Ivar is just baffled. So, you know, kind of like uh, semi-okay promo. I don't know where this is going. You know, I didn't really like it yeah. so much. Yeah, I mean, I would just, you know, when they said, oh, we're going to do a basketball thing, I'm like, as long as this leads into a match tonight or something, or like just like a, a beatdown, a brawl, we didn't get that, you know. And I don't know why they had this segment drag on, like it was going to be some crazy can't-miss segment. They had it in the last hour, and it, really didn't help the last hour at all exactly so actually that's the part that like for me it should have been tweaked <laughs> yep. so charlie caruso is joined by the new raw women's champion asuka so caruso asked how like how she's pers like pro processing the situation and asuka talks in japanese she said i'm legit i don't know what she said but, yeah like, well yeah yeah she's probably really happy and then carrie saying she shows up and she turns up and she's like talking to her and they both can believe her that she's finally the champion good stuff for these girls they deserve the world. They're like hell of a workers. So, you know, finally, WWE, I don't care the situation. I don't care the circumstance. They finally go in with the right person here. So that's okay. what, like, you know, that's the beautiful, beautiful thing about redemption. So we get to see Jean Paul, our video package from like the last man standing match, Randy Orton against Edge. We already talked about that. So no reason to talk about this. But then we actually get to see Selena Vega and her staple. You know, uh, Garza, Andrade, and also, like, Austin Theory. And they're all kind of, like, arguing. Yeah, they're all, like, arguing, going back and forth. They're like, you're bullshit. Get rid of the gringo. He always loses. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you guys always lose, too. And they're like, oh, see. So it's all, like, it's all bullshit. They're all, because it, it they're all bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, all used, they're all presented, like, losers. Yeah, you said, like, you know, you said it when the, the stable was just put together. It's like, it could be something legit. But at the same time, they never went with it. So actually, now they look like all losers. They look like idiots. And this situation that we're going to be talking about made it even more idiots than before. So, they, yeah. you know, they keep getting buried every single week. And if, that if, thing is good this, for me. This is, yeah, this is how I would fix this stable. You got to do next week, you do Austin Theory versus Humberto. And, I mean, if Austin Theory is Monday Night Raw, if he's not going back down to NXT, which I feel is a huge mistake if he doesn't, you got to do something where he's in a match against Humberto. 
and maybe he starts to lose or whatever. And then you have Garza and um, Andrade turn on on Austin Theory. And then they, they're like, hey, Humberto, you're a loser. We kicked this guy out. You know, hey, you're my cousin. Turn heel, join with us. You're a loser. Might as well join with us and we'll make you something. And he could be like, so. And then turn Humberto heel, have him join with them, and then either move Theory back down to NXT or turn him face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a good opportunity. Do something to just spice it up and at least, I don't know, because to me, I th- they're dead. Why did we see, which we'll get to a little bit, why did we have to see Andrade lose? Oh, yeah. yeah. In like, very, very, I mean. in very, he was very unconvincing. He did not look that, you know, great. It wasn't like that close of a match. He didn't look like a champion. That's the no. one thing. And, you know, he, he holds that championship. Nobody, like, even, like, challenges for that. Yeah. So that's even a more of a big problem. But we actually see a guy that, like, again, we have to keep repeating this every single week. Monday, nah, nah, nah. he forgets they, how to wrestle. They even say it. They say it on, I think at this time it was Byron Saxton who said it. He's like, oh, Akira Tozawa's coming in. He has a lot of momentum in the Cruiserweight tournament on NXT. Done. Done. And it's like, what, this dude, this dude could be legit one day, and he's like, ah. Oh. Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday. All right, yeah. And then Monday he goes out there like zero energy, like no. nah, nah, nah. And completely lost, completely lost. You know they didn't do anything with him. He goes against to another cruiserweight that was Angel Garza, but then he looked bad. He looked at, the match was only it was one sided, and yeah. in the end, win Clipper and done. I mean, one does Gar time. does Garza need to look good like this? Yeah, and I understand you. You're not. He can't bring in as many local jobbers and enhancement talent because with everything going on, but I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it, it doesn't make any sense because of who he's beating. Cause it's like, again, like we said, how can we believe this guy is being so legit on Wednesdays? Yeah. Cause the people he, the people he's beating on Wednesdays, it's like, dude, how can you beat them? But then you get your ass kicked like nothing on Monday. And that's the biggest problem. You know, like, yeah. like we get behind, you know, Tozawa, everybody wants him to win, but we know that like on Monday, there's not just possibility. There's no way in hell. Yeah, because like he's like we, you and I were saying, like if anybody deserves to win it, you know, he's definitely one of the guys who deserves to be interim cruiserweight champ. But then what? Your in, interim cruiserweight champ is going to wrestle then Monday Night Raw and get beat in two minutes? Yeah. Like, and no. then that's the one thing he looked. He looked really bad this one, but of course, then that means on Wednesday he's going to look so legit. He's mm-hmm. going to win. He's going to be three zero. So, you know, the match was pretty quick. And then, like I said, Angel Garza wins with the wing clipper. And then at the end of the match, then Austin Theory gets in Garza's face and they were, they were, they were arguing. Like all three of them and with Celine and Celine is trying to, you know, mediate. He's trying mm-hmm. to piece things out, but like it's not working. And then while they're still arguing, Drew McIntyre music hits. And then he comes down to the ring. Garza shoves Theory at McIntyre. And then he gets hit with a claymore. And then Garza and Andrade are laughing. He's like, uh, you know, Ringo. Yeah. Dumbass, you know, dumbass. They're like, that's legit. You know, they're like, oh, like Pendejo, you know, all of that. So then McIntyre hits Angel Garza with another claymore kick. And also, like, see, this one even, like, Garza had to sell it like, more. Because Garza know. is like, you know, uh, 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 and then he's going to do the same with Andrade. But this ended up becoming a match. Again, like two weeks ago, yeah. two or three weeks ago, we saw this champion versus champion. That yeah, great, right? and is that what it is that what they did? Because I wasn't sure. I'm like, did we see this already, or did we see him versus Garza, or did no, we see no, did we see Andrade, both? He was champion versus champion. Yeah, yeah. and then because like the way they were making it on commentary, they Saxon was like, I can't believe we're gonna see this champion versus champion, and I'm like, I watch a lot of bullshit, so it's hard to you know tell the one turd from the other. But I'm like, I'm pretty sure we saw this already. No, oh, yeah, yeah, and you know, and the outcome was exactly the same. Because see, match wise, like you said, McIntyre dominated for the whole mm-hmm. uh, for the whole match. So like Almas didn't have like a really good showing, and that's concerning. Yeah, Almas had to be like sneaky, you know, when he headed under the ring and then he yanked McIntyre in and he slammed his shoulder like kind of into the, like the apron or the frame like of the yes. ring where they you know they have all the toys underneath. So like he said, McIntyre looked legit, and again, we want McIntyre to look legit. We didn't want him to lose this match or you know almost lose and look like a like he barely won, but why does he need to be wrestling against the United States champion who should yeah. also be winning? Yeah, exactly. and that's what I mean. So like, and then it, at the end was another claimer kick, one, two, three, and then of course Almas loses. Your United mm-hmm. States champion is completely dropped out. But Mac I guess looks strong. I was going to say the one thing I will say though, I guess that this is why they're kind of ending the brand split, which we'll get into 
a yes, little yeah. bit, but I mean, that's pretty much why I think they're doing it because we keep seeing these same matches over and over. Um, the, and uh, that's one of the reasons. Second reason is they want to boost ratings. Yeah. They just want to boost ratings. The ratings I, that they're I, getting I, right now yeah. are really, really bad. I even saw at some weeks are below 2 million. But I feel like, honestly, those two things go hand in hand. If you don't oh, yeah. get fresh matchups, nobody's going to watch. So it's like, yes. yeah, they both. Well, it's, it's, it's this yeah. name value, and it's like, mm-hmm. well, then we need these guys. And now they're going to allow certain superstars to be in both shows. It's like going to be like the wildcard rule that they mm-hmm. had a year ago. Pretty yeah. much the same ruling, but it was going to be a better explained version of it. Yeah. So like and, they're and also keep landing and, some ground for that. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to be like, because the wild card was like a, a mess where it's like, oh, only three superstars can come over or like a tag team will count as one superstar. So like you can bring over two tag teams and one guy, like one singles wrestler. And it was all confusing. I like how it's just like, boom, we had Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross on the show tonight. They're technically SmackDown, but they're like, hey, we're here. Also, they're the tag team champion. So I really don't count them because they're... Yes. You know, they could show up on NXT and I wouldn't need an explanation. It's like, you're the tag champs. You can show up wherever you want. But, you know, we did McIntyre. He called out his opponent next week, you know, King Bullshit himself. So that's going to be something. But at least there's like a little history there between them. So I'm like, okay, I kind of give that a pass. And that's where I like, where it's like, I don't want just random people to show up. I don't want like Kofi and Big E to be like, hey, hey. Oh, yeah. I no. want it to be like it makes sense. Hey, somebody called them out or somebody did this or, th- or like, hey, I'm looking for a tag partner. And then some other guy shows up. Well, hey, let's be in a tag team, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. Like you said, like McIntyre pretty much announced that match with King Corbin. Do I really uh, I, I get invested? I'm like you. I don't. I'm like, is this supposed to boost the ratings? I don't think so. I no. just like. I don't think that it's going to do absolutely anything, but at least they're going to try to move, like you said, play with that, that, even that idea that you mentioned yesterday with Styles. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, maybe he can go back to SmackDown. Maybe yeah. they need him on SmackDown. And the one, thing, the, the one thing, I don't know if WWE is this smart, but I would do it. You bring Corbin over, boom, he can bump. That can be main event. He can bump into Lashley earlier on in the show. Oh, hey, because remember it was Lashley and McIntyre were Corbin's you know, his cronies. Yes. Now that Lashley is working with MVP, kind of, sort of, MVP, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, like, you know, maybe Corbin talks down to Lashley. MVP can be like, you're going to let him talk to you like that. Maybe he can come out there, cause a DQ, something in this match, beat down Corbin, beat down Drew. Drew's such a prideful, you know, champion. He can maybe call out Lashley and that kind of starts their feud. So if they use Corbin for a stepping stone to get Lashley into the feud, then I'm all for it. But like you said, otherwise, it's like, do I care about Corbin versus McIntyre? No. I'm just like, no. But like talking about all this situation with Lashley and and Corbin, uh, MVP approaches him, approaches Mm -hmm. Bobby Lashley, and he says backstage, he's asking him, why is he wasting his talent and time on like chumps like Umberto Carrillo when idiots like Otis are getting title shots? A lot of people are thinking that way, and they should but he says that he must have bad management. Solana like flips her like lid, but Leslie seems to be thinking about it. So you know. Oh my God, say, she's so annoying. She like, just like oh, she, 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 she was clearly trying to do her best, Vicky Guerrero. Yes. But it was like if Vicky uh, Guerrero. That was like you know the gourmet chef version. Hers was like the freaking, you know, dollar menu version. Oh, yeah. Well, and also, like, like, the one thing that I like about MVP is how he said, when was the last time you had a championship match? Mm -hmm. And he's like, that's 2007. And I'm like, yeah, the only time that he had a championship match was uh, he had to relinquish the ECW championship. And then he went for the WWE championship against John Cena in a – it was a bash at the – it was a great American bash, 2007. And that was actually a decent match, and Cena pulled that off. But now, other than that, you know, you thought that that was like the break for Bobby Lashley. Never materialized done. into anything. Done. And talking about done, we're going to like the uh, incredible visit, like you said, uh, the tag team champions, like the girls tag team champions, women's tag team champions, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross are shown mm-hmm. backstage. And they're going to have a moment of piss, moment of bliss, moment of, you know, and you, you put the name of it. And see, they came out and they're talking about becky lynch of course because they went through like they dragged this segment yeah and, and that's the, the that, that's the only thing i don't like about the becky lynch i mean i shouldn't say about becky lynch is announcement but it's more about the way wwe shoves everything down your throat 
Becky Lynch made that announcement. Okay, legit. We said we're happy for her and Seth. But then why do we need to keep seeing it after every commercial break? Yes. When we come back, oh, they, they did it at the first commercial break right at the end of the opening segment. We, we went to commercial. We came back. Moments ago, we saw Asuka, you know, one. It's like, we just saw this. We were here. It's like, even like, don't you think that like the theme of the show was based on like Becky Lynch's announcement? Yeah, because like, every, yeah, because it was brought up here in this segment and a lot of people kept bringing it up. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, so, like, again, you know, like, we're at, at least at least the iconics were bringing it up, and they they're being heel about it. So, like, at least that was a little. Everyone was like, "Oh, Becky." Yeah, like, like it, somebody it, was. Being I, I gotta, I gotta give you that. Yes, because Th- and same all, with, same with Shayna later oh, on. Yeah. Super yeah. legit. Oh yeah, that was that, that was a little cool because you when we were like playing with it, but mm-hmm. like, see, of course, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross that we're talking about, you know, Becky being pregnant, and they were like, "Oh, like she had a baby," and we have our babies that are like tag titles. And then mm-hmm. the iconics, like you said, Baden Rose and Billy Kay come back. Yep. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of like their theme. Oh, is it? Like, like for them. <laughs> it's like, yep. <laughs> yep, that's yeah. it. That's it. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. I can close my eyes and I picture it when you oh, sing. Oh, yeah, it. it's legit. It's legit. I, you know, I love the entrance. I mean, as, as wrestlers, they're god awful. No one can yeah. take that away from, her, from them. But, like, <laughs> as characters, you know, like, they are, like, they're supposed to, they do what they're supposed to do. And that is piss you off. Mm. And, you know, if oh, they do that, then... I could... I, I almost wish they were in NXT because they'd be perfect in the Robert Stone brand. Yes. And Ch- Chelsea Green could get all the wins. And that's how the feud starts. That they're bullshit. And they're like, no, Chelsea, we're legit. And, you know, but they lose and Chelsea wins all the time. And then you could start the feud from that. And, you know, they're best friends. So they know how to carry themselves. You know, the one yeah. sticks out for the other. And that's the, oh, the, yeah. the good thing. You know, like, you see the tryout that they had. In 2014, like they went together to NXT, they were all uh-huh. always been together, and you see that love, you know. I'm you pretty see- sure Sean Spears says, I mean, I don't know if they legit all three live together, but I think he said they all live together, and I'm like, that I'm not, you know, sure, buddy. I, I don't like if that's true. Like, he is the perfect all- ten. I was yeah, like, well, that's I don't right. Know if, they, if they will be in an episode of Triple Play Playboy, you yeah. know. <laughs> They want to do that they, you know i wouldn't be upset if i got to watch and you it, know what if if i was him and that was the case i wouldn't mind doing the job to cody every week then i'd no. be like that's all right oh no you then you know randy that's fine give me the chair you know and i'll be saying i'll be watching so absolutely fine on that but see like the iconics like they just they just came back and they say hey we want you know an opportunity for the tag titles what mm-hmm. do they do jean paul in wwe fashion of course they have a match and the match turns out to be the if you win, if you be the tag champions, automatically you become a number one contender, correct? Yeah, and I mean, do, do I think it's a bullshit way? Oh, absolutely. But is WWE present pro wrestling in a bullshit manner? Absolutely. Do I think that they should be the, the number one, you know, contenders? Yeah, why not? Because who the hell else is there? Let's yeah. be real. Who else is there for women's, like, the belts exist. You know, you have some, you know, people in the community that are like, oh, they should just burn these belts and get rid of them. Okay, asshole. That's never going to happen. These belts are here to stay. So we might as well get used to it. So, hey, a legit women's tag team, the Iconics, they have a tag team name. They're not Alexa Bliss and her best friend. Nikki Cross. And that is something that good observation. Can right they there please get a like name? They're not even a tag. Yeah, can they please get an it's Alexa Bliss and her friend? That's like Jean Paul and his favorite drink, coffee. No pun intended, because Alexa Bliss drinks that <laughs> bullshit too. But it's like, you know, can they please have a name? Can they have some kind of like so the iconics coming back challenging for it? You know, they ended up will take you through it winning this match. Yeah, whatever. I'm fine with it. Give them the belts. I don't even care anymore. No, well, I, and not not in a negative way. I don't care, but it's like it's something new. It's something I don't know. Go for it. Well, it is again. If, if, if you you just gotta say like, yeah, it's it's they're a tag team, and like you said, mm-hmm. there's no women's tag teams besides you know they they split up the Kabuki Warriors. Now they're completely split because you know Asuka is gonna be the is the new champion, so she's gonna be in a singles role. Who do you have besides? And I them? almost I I I like was watching it obviously, but I was like. I forget if Kyrie's gear was like black because dude, we went back. No, we Kyrie's gear back. was like the, the, the blue. Old, like, the yeah, old, so like, Kyrie, Kyrie essentially just turned face. She was like, what? Yes. You know, it's like, okay, which yes. I'm all for. Yes, but like, see, they're not a tag team anymore. Yeah, so that's, like and, said, and, it is, was the time for them to bring another tag team mm-hmm. because Fire and Desire, done. done. So and the only other have? tag, so like, let's, the women's tag teams that have names, like you just said, Fire and Desire, the Iconics, and Kabuki Warriors. That's it. 
Yeah, and so you don't have anybody else. So you and yep. you know you could make tag teams, but you choose not to mm-hmm. because. But and that's the thing. You you put yourself in these situations, and yep. it's not bad. The iconics here. Yeah, we're not saying that they're the best tag team in the world. They're a tag team. No, you know, and they're they, and they're decent they, on the. Per, like, I mean, they're like decent. They get heel heat on the mic. You know, when they yes. talk and they say stuff. You know, you want to see them get their ass kicked. I love what they're like. We're not going to get upstaged by a jelly bean or whatever the heck they said. They're yes. like, you know, screw this baby. We don't care. Yes, exactly. So like, and see, Billy Kay is like a really, really great heel because all the screaming, oh my God, pay attention. Oh, this yeah. And, and the Australian accent. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Yeah, it's fine. Mm-hmm. So they get the win. They, but they end up in an Alexa Bliss. So of course, like there's also like the news that like they're going to be challenging for the tag titles next week on Raw. So now, Jean-Paul, let's go to Rey Mysterio, his interview backstage. And then he says he feels great. He says that he had to hype himself up last night by saying that the risk was worth the reward. But then he saw his life flash before his eyes when King Corbin threw him off the, the roof. And then thankfully, and then the explanation, the WWE explanation. What's that coming out of the sky? Yep. No, oh, Eddie. <laughs> Eddie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Paul sent me a great picture of, like, of that. And then he said he fell on a six feet, uh, six feet on a second roof. And Alistair Black made the same fate. So he tried his best, but he couldn't get the job done. So Seth Rollins was up to him. And he looked like you said, he was some kind of like illegal substance. I don't, he was under the influence of some kind of, oh, like the news were so devastating for him. Or like, I don't know if he's happy. Yeah. I don't know. Well, if maybe, he's maybe, like, maybe they're like, Seth, like Becky's pregnant. That's legit. And it's like, we've never had sex yet. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, or like, or, or like, you know, or like, it's for, you know, it's done. I don't know what happened on that, but like, you know, he didn't look like, you know, like himself. Yeah, which, which later on, you know, spoiler, we got he, you know, he could care less about the news of his child. He was just so devastated at the loss to Drew McIntyre. Yeah, he's pretty much just done. Yes, so like Rey Mysterio congratulates him, and he said, "Being a father changes you." So he said, just walks off. And Dude, then what, what was he? He was. It was almost like drink. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, it was then, just like, hey, you want something? It's like, nope. And even very mysterious, he says, you're such a dick. <laughs> you know, it's like, so for Mysterio to say that, you know, it was, they added that line. So they're playing mm-hmm. out this new persona of Seth Rollins. So Jean-Paul, we go to Ricochet, Cedric Alexander, and our truth going against Shane Thorne, Brandon. Wait, Lynch, was, was it our truth? It didn't look like him. I think it was a pretty, what was it Pretty Ricky or something? Yes, yeah. R- okay, yeah, pretty- yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, it kind of, I guess, looked like truth, but I don't know. Maybe your notes are a little wrong, but you no. Know, well, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's like it's like the, what was the name? Ricky, pretty Ricky, or pretty Ricky? Yeah, yeah. Pretty Ricky, like he had like the 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 fake teeth and everything yeah, yeah. right there, like and you know, our truth being comedic, you know, comedic and everything, trying to be funny. This time for me, it didn't do anything, just because no, like you know, I mean, they were trying to push this guy, Shane Thorne, you know, big and everything. I have news for you on that. On uh, Bink, on Bink, they want to make him, you know, in a year, in a year and a half from now, a big star, top star. Because the guy has the look, he's really tall, he's really huge, big, and that's why they're gonna try to like make him the next big thing. That's yeah, but I you know what? I mean, these guys are with MVP. MVP's with Lashley. I'm not Lashley. I don't want to beat Drew, but he can look good in that match. He can look good in that feud if they hopefully they go to that soon. MVP was pushing for it clearly, like we went over tonight. If he gets these guys, you know, they gotta get a win over Ricochet, and they gotta like look good. Maybe they move on to another team. They win that. Maybe they beat the Street Profits, the Viking Raiders, whoever is the tag champs at the time. I don't see why you can't build these guys up, but build like a legit, a legit little group there. Oh yeah, give yeah. Lash, give Lash the United States Championship. And then, but that's so much better because you're not doing anything with it. So yeah, that's like, that I mean. yeah be, screw it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, I will be fine with that. But like, in the end, uh, our truth. And uh, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander get the win. And, of course, Pretty Ricky gets like, oh, you know, like all celebrating and everything. But, like, thank God, uh, Lashley comes out and he spears our truth one more time. So, like, again, like you said, the feud is right there. These two factions kind mm-hmm. of, like, going and giving Lashley the spot. And see, now, why couldn't – Lashley has been very tolerable and, in some cases, actually enjoyable these past couple weeks. Why couldn't you book Lashley like this on his debut return? He comes back – Decent ish pop gets on the mic, calls everybody out. He's pissed. I, when I was here before, nobody gave a shit. You know, what was I? ECW champ, the champion of your third brand. And he should have been pissed and tearing everybody's heads off like he is now. Yeah. 
No, and then that's the, my, maybe he asked for this push or like they gave him this push because they know that they can try to do something with this guy. But I mean, least, a, a, after that Rusev angle, man, they should be rewarded with something. Yeah, that's what, and, and maybe that's what is that's the reward. The risk was for the yep. the reward, you know. So like, all right, so that's what it was happening right there with Bobby Lashley. So WWE at least is executing what they claim to say for money in the bank. So mm-hmm. like I said, um, at least you know this match took place to get, give us this storyline, whatever. So, Rey Mysterio goes out oh, before that. Uh, Jinder Mahal got a promo and he's congratulating Drew McIntyre, modern day Maharaja. He's saying that he's really happy that he's a, a 3MB member, you know, one of his buddies, like he's the champion. Everybody respects him. Everybody looks up to Drew. So, he's going to try his best to, like, kind of like get the people to feel the same way about him. And he's like, you know, he's like, you should feel the same about me because I'm a former WWE champion. And it's like, Every time we think about that, we think about Shinsuke Nakamura being legit and then yep. being like the, you know, the jobber and that done. he is now with yes. done. So that was, that was it for like Jinder Mahal. He didn't have a match, but the people that do, did have a match was Rey Mysterio going again with Aleister Black going against Seth Rollins and Murphy. See, this match was like pretty much Rey Mysterio and, and Aleister Black going against just Murphy because Seth Rollins was still like impacted. Like he was still mm-hmm. in shock. He was still, he was still in the impact zone. He was still in the impact zone, and he wasn't yep. TNA. So, like, it was just like... Well, it was because he was getting a little TNA from Becky, so... Well, hey, there you go. You know, if, if that's what it was... <laughs> he went from the Monday Night Messiah to the, the ass kicker. I mean, the last liquor. I mean, the yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, well, they're going to have their Monday Night Baby. So, yep. the Monday Night Baby is going to be... And, and that, that baby should be the Monday Night Messiah. <laughs> yeah, know, exactly. from Messiah to Messiah. Like, if Dragon Ball teaches us something, you mm-hmm. know, you inherit the powers... So he can be my Messiah as well. So he will be the Messiah ass kicker. So, yeah, but h- how good was, how good is, I mean, we knew this, but how good's Murphy? Oh, oh good Murphy. Buddy, yeah. Buddy Murphy is so legit. I mean, in this, man, I mean, just like the storyline, like you would think Buddy Murphy versus Aleister Black, Rey Mysterio handicap, he'd be done. I mean, he held in there. He looked good. And the way that this storyline's going, he's a guy who you got to turn face and, you know, get him on a singles run. They had that, remember? He beat Daniel Bryan. He beat, like, you know, a few. He was in that group. Yeah, but like, then they, boom, they slapped him right with the Messiah thing, and that would have been a legit stable. And then AOP, you know, because their bones are made of, you know, glass, they're like, so. Yep. We got much. hurt again. Yep. So, like, that they had to drop those things, but, like, we'll see what they do with Buddy Murphy. I can see, you know, if it's not this year, at least next year, I see better oh, things for him because this is, this is the year of the – he consolidates this mm-hmm. year. You know, like, yeah. he kind of does oh, yeah. jobs for everybody else, but then next year must be the time, okay, mm-hmm. you've done all of this for us. This is the time we focus on Oh, you. yeah. He's definitely the future. Yes. He might not and, be the present, but he's definitely the future. Yes. So, like, you know, Jean Paul, Ray Mysterio hits a crossbody, and then Murphy rolls through the roll up and a near fall. Then Ray counters Murphy's low with a bulldog, and then Ray punches Rollins off the apron, and then looks for the 619 to Murphy, but Rollins grabs him and throws him to the floor. And for some reason, the referee decides that that wasn't allowed. So, you know, yeah, like, I don't, wait, through. when he, when, especially because what we saw after the DQ happened, I'm like, why did the DQ happen then? Maybe yes. he was supposed to, and the ref was kind of just like, didn't really know, and it was like, but yeah, really awkward. Like, like you, if you're on the outside of the ring, anything goes. Yes, you're the guy who's not legal can beat the shit out of the other guy. So when he did that, and he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna ring the bell," I'm like, "What is going on?" WWE fashion, like they don't know their yep. own ruling. So you know, do you know what it is, Jean Paul? So like, Rollins attacks Rey Mysterio, poking, poking him in the eye, and then shoving him into the barricade. Then Rollins yells at Murphy to stay back. He's like, "Get the fuck, stay just back there. Don't be doing anything." And then he grabs Ray's head and slowly shoves his eyes into like the corner of the ring post. Yeah, he was in the ah, ring steps, ah, and he's like, ah, and then like Seth releases Ray, and he looks like really satisfied by Ray's like, oh my God, you know, and then like the medical staff came out. Yeah, yeah, like, Ray had like a little fake blood packet because he, you saw he had his hand up here for a while and then when he moved it, it was like the fake blood. Yeah, the, I mean, like to, to me, yeah, to me, it was like, it looked legit. And I mean, obviously I knew it didn't look legit like real, but it was like, oh, you know, pretty good beat down. I like how Rollins went from zero to a hundred. He went yeah. from like, so to like, <laughs> like going crazy, like, you know, gonna pretty much kill this guy like gouge his eye out well the news of being a father you know that changes you i guess yeah, that, that's does. what you gotta do when like you find out you're gonna be a father so <laughs> he went what's like he, said, what's, he gonna zero, do with that, what's he gonna do when that kid craps his pants oh yeah 
ah, and then Becky's gonna put him in the like in the yeah. disarmor, and it's like oh, you know, or I will always remember Homer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Why you that. little? Yeah, I love that. So <laughs> yeah. you know, that for me, that's how that's Parenthood one on one for me. Yep. You know, it's like ah, so like that's that's the most legit thing. And then like you know, Ray of course is done. And then we go to like the medical stuff, you know, we go like to the medical like room and then mm -hmm. we're trying to like take care of Ray. And then we saw Alistair Black by Ray, but then also we say Rollins and Buddy Murphy kind of come and check on him. And he wanted to apologize. He's like, yeah, oh. which, which I almost like it. It's almost like he snaps. And then he's like, oh, you know, like not like in the Dijakovic sense where it's like he almost is like apologetic and feels bad for what he did. But it's like Rollins, literally, he's starting to like break like mentally. He's like starting yes. to go insane. Like, yes. he loses it, and then when he comes back to reality, he's like, oh, shit, like, what I just do? My favorite thing is when Rollins comes up, and he's like, oh, I want to talk to Ray. You know, I want to apologize. And then Murphy just looks at Alistair Black, and then Black just, like, throws him against the wall. And he's just like, dude, you're out of here. Like, yeah, they just start falling, yeah, so and it's like, 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 Murphy didn't even do anything, and he gets his ass kicked for again. If, like, like you said, where, like, when it comes to storytelling, see, that was really good. The yeah. whole thing was like planned out really good and Rollins, you know, executes it really well. Mm. And you what know, did I say to you? Because what else are you going to do with Seth Rollins? He's one of your biggest stars on Monday Night Raw. He's available to wrestle, you know, during the pandemic. You got to use him. And he just lost. He lost that mania. He loses here. What is he going to do? It's like, oh, I'm the Messiah. I'm the savior. Well, the savior's a loser. Of course, it's going to weigh on you heavy, heavy mentally. So what happened? He snapped. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and they're, they're executing it pretty well. So that was mm -hmm. interesting. Then we go to, like, the basketball match against with the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders. Viking Raiders end up winning. And then they will all, like, exchange. Oh, you know, it's all good, dude. We're friends. You know, friends, 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 friends. And then after that, I think they went at it for a little bit, correct? Yeah, well, they the, the Street Profits actually won. It was, like, 74 to, or 79 to 2 or 3. But they like the Viking Raiders finally scored a basket, and they were like, "Oh, yay, it's legit!" And then they're like, "They're like, we won!" And they're like, "No, that's literally just your first basket. Look at the scoreboard. They're like, you have more fouls than points." And then they were like, "No, we just let you guys win." They're like, "We're actually legit." And then I think Eric passes the Ivar. And they were like from like from all the way, right? And yeah, yeah, or like yeah, from like half right? court or something. He. You know, he shoots it. Obviously, there was the camera cut, so it clearly wasn't him doing it. I mean, it could have been, but... Mr. Perfect, first. you know, yeah. Mr. Perfect. Yeah, it wasn't like Mr. Perfect where it zoomed out and you would see the whole thing because he was legit. So yeah, they make the basket, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, so... Yeah. And, I mean, it pretty much sets up a match, but it's like, why couldn't you just, like I said, they start, we... they start shooting basketballs. The Street Profits are clearly better. Screw this. They could have took something, popped the ball, and then started beating the shit out of them right there in the basketball court and then been done with the segment. Oh, yeah. They could have just done that. It would have been a lot more interesting than just having this NBA stuff on Monday Night Raw. I don't know why they did that. But then we go to Shayna Baszler. This is, this is good. This is good. Shayna Baszler is warming up, and when Natalia walks up to her and tells her, is disrespectful to bash the miracle of motherhood. Why? Because Shayna Baszler said that, like, only somebody like Becky Lynch will just decide to get knocked up during, like, her being the champion. And she says, like, oh, it is, it is, like, Charlie Caruso goes to her. He's like, do you feel, are you happy for her? He's like, you know who the father is? And then that's, <laughs> That right, was so legit. Case. Like, like, you know, I, I, I raised my case. And then she, yeah. just walk, she just walked away. So good stuff. Like, you know, that's the mm -hmm. stuff that I want from a heel. You know, that's good on Shayna. And she's probably the best heel that they have in the women's division. I would just say because she has the logo of a, you know, a bitch. That's yeah. Oh, great. exactly. And, I mean, you can slowly build Shayna back up. Shayna can still be legit. Like we said, they completely ruined her debut. But, I mean, she's not completely ruined. It's not like, oh, Shayna, you might as well retire now because you're done. No, because, like, this promo right here, she cuts a couple of them a few weeks in a row. And, you know, everyone will forget that she lost at WrestleMania because people forget stuff pretty easily, you know, after a while. The, the, the common, you know, audience, you could say the casual fan, they'll forget that she lost. So you can definitely present her in a legit way. Yeah, but it's like, awesome. I don't know, like I said, again, like, why is everybody, yeah, it's a legit moment. Why is everybody, like, everything was Becky Lynch related? Natalia had to call her out because of Becky Lynch. And then it's like, okay, like. Natalia, when are you going to have kids? You know, and you that, that, was the, that was the beauty of it. Because she yeah. goes, what do you know about motherhood? It's like, you're clearly not going to have kids. You're yeah, she's like, like what, you have like... 36? It's like, yeah. you're not going to have kids. 
yeah, you have 17 cats, you know, that's all you do. And it's like, you know, no, I mean, cats are legit, but it's like, you know, don't be talking about kids. And, and it's like, what are you and, and the TJ great thing doing? Is like she goes, you know, that the hard dynasty will die with you. So that because she's not going to have any offspring, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, so that was real. That was really cool. And like you said, and you know, like then we get a match with Shayna Baszler and Natalia. Like you said, Natalia all calling her a bitch, all pissed off. In the end, Shayna Baszler had a win. Yep. <laughs> you had to like give the win to Shayna because you're building Shayna. And, and the that? best part, because I mean, you know, if you want to take us through knee strike and done, but you know, Shayna looked good. The part I, I guess I didn't mind, but I'm also like, really, can you present yourself in a more, you know, mature way? Is like when Natalia lost at the end, she had like a temper tantrum and was like, oh yeah, she was like, like, yeah, she was really upset. I'm like, yeah. really? Can you just like, I would have rather had her. Like, if she's not going to be selling the knee strike and have been just, like, knocked out cold, I would have rather had her get up and, like, yell at Shayna and be like, oh, you know, let's bullshit, get back in here, let's do this again, you know. Yeah, instead it would have been a lot it, better than Yeah, instead of just that. throwing a temper tantrum on the ring like a child. And it's like, oh, yeah, that, that, was not, uh, that was something that I did not appreciate either because it's like, Natalia's like, come on, you're a member from the Har family. You shouldn't be putting tantrums yeah, yeah, yeah. tantrums in the middle of the ring but like at least when Bret Hart threw a tantrum in the ring he broke cameras and spit in Vince's face and he did WCW things yeah. in it so like we go she'd to be like AEW yeah he would be like or like NWA or something yeah. like that so like we get to see Charlie interviewing King Corbin from SmackDown and then she has about what he did last night and he says that he did what he thought it would be to take the win so then Charlie has what was like going through his mind when Corbin like threw like Mysterio and Aleister Black and like people didn't, you know, he didn't see where they were going to land. And he said, don't worry. Like I knew that there was going to be like another move, you know, like another thing right there. So they were not going to die. So it's all good. But then he says that like next week, he's going to, you know, prove McIntyre who's the real man or the best man. So like he says next week, you know, I'm going to go after you, McIntyre. Same thing that McIntyre said about Corbin. So yeah, and I like do like said, how he did this to Bill Lashley. I'm okay. Yeah, it's because not Lashley involved, I don't care. And the only reason I mentioned Lashley is because of what Corbin said in his promo. He's like, "Oh, for you know, for almost a year, this guy followed me around Monday Night Raw. I taught him everything he knows. Blah blah blah. You know, and it, and he he made some kind of like reference to him being king and this and that. So it's like, okay, whatever. But he pretty much said like, our. Uh, McIntyre is going to realize what it's like, you know, to face him, you know, or why they call him the king. It's like, yeah, because you're the king of bullshit. But like I said, if that's because Lashley was kind of in that little stable, so that's how I can maybe see them working Lashley into it. But if they don't, like I already said, completely wasted match, wasted segment, you know. But I guess there's really nothing else to do with Drew, so. Yeah, I mean, like I, well, you said it because there was a little bit of a promo when they were like, oh, he, keep, they keep hyping the first episode of the Last Rite series with The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. So AJ Styles was just looking at the whole thing eating, eating popcorn. But then uh, by the end of the trailer, like, he was like, so... You know, Which, you, do you know what to be that whole part of that was completely, I like killed me? So AJ's watching it, right? I'm like, okay, whatever. AJ was like talking about the undertaker in the preview. He's like, yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, your body breaks down over years and years of wrestling. Like he's like le talking legit, like, okay, yeah, you know. And then when it's over, AJ's sitting there and he's like, oh, this documentary is bullshit. And it's like, dude, you're in it. <laughs> yep. Like, why couldn't they edit that part of AJ out of it for Monday Night Raw to at least have it make sense? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh my god, like that completely. I was like, like AJ, you know, dude, you're, you're a clown. You know your body breaks down, and it's like, well, clearly it very broke down, but yes, you still he beat you. So yeah, I agree with you. So that's what we're gonna have, you know, in the ne in the next week. But now we go to the main event, John Paul. It was uh, the return of the rated R superstar Edge and also Randy Orton. So Edge just came out, and he's just saying, hey, it's been like six weeks that I've been here, and you know, the last time that I was here was for WrestleMania, and I beat Randy Orton. So Randy Orton comes out before he can actually com continue talking. And he says, well, that night, the best man won. And then he, he just walks off. He's about to go up to the ring. And there was like three minutes left or so. I'm like, nah, it's not, it's not done yet. So he's like, no, you know what? He completely turns around. He changes his mind. He's like, you know what? No, no, no. I, I can't even like, I practice it. I try to like, I try to make it come out this way. It's not working. So John Paul, he pretty much challenges Edge to another match. Yeah. He says, you know, in the Royal Rumble, like he kind of surrounded himself for 20 by 29 guys. So it's like he's always been protected. Yeah. And then he says, you know, WrestleMania, like he had to resource to like the last man standing rule. So it's not a traditional wrestling match. 
but mm -hmm. this time what he was asking for match is like a traditional wrestling match because he says at that night the best man won but not the best wrestler and yeah i mean I, the, to me to me the, the promo was soup was was like extremely legit rain because you had to do some with this feud you and i both said we wanted to see a legit wrestling match now we're gonna get it we think Edge technically didn't agree to anything, but with everything Randy Orton said was true. You know, the Rumble's kind of its own deal. It's not like a legit match, last man standing match. Clearly, the way they did it was more like a street fight, you know, like a fight you'd see in an actual movie or something. And, you know, he said, Edge, you know, it's been like nine years since you wrestled. Like, that's a long time. And he's like, yeah, you might have grit. You might have all this stuff, but that's not enough to shake off this ring rust of nine years. He's like, you're done. And he challenged him to a match, and he was just all like he saw a ghost. Like he saw Christian, you know, winning the WWE championship and not losing yep. it, you know, two days later. And so like you said, like, uh, Charlie kind of like ruined the moment. <laughs> yeah, because I would have had it go off the air like that. Yeah. Charlie has to come out there, and she's like, so, Edge, uh, what's your response? And he's just like. They make it like, to me, like they make it like too, and I don't want to say sports-like, but they make it like too more like, you know, too informative. You know, like, like hey, like you when you need the guy, like right there. What do you think? You know, it's yeah, like, like it should have just. Guys are talking to each other. You don't need the guy in the middle being like, "What do you?" It should have. It should have been. He steered him down. Orton just is like looking at him, smirking, whatever. Edge just looks at him, rolls out of the ring, and just walks up the ramp backwards, just looking at him. And then yeah. maybe after he walks up a little bit, turns around, starts walking normal, but then looks over his shoulder, doesn't say anything. And then Ord could just like yell to him far away, like "I'll see you next week, Edge," or like oh, yeah, you know, oh, yeah, blah blah blah. Like, I wait for your response, you know. Yeah, yeah, just something. And instead of getting Charlie making it completely awkward. Yeah, yeah, but like, like in in the end, like they get challenged to a wrestling match because, like you said, uh, we both wanted it. I think a lot of people were not mm -hmm. satisfied with what we got at the last with the last man standing match, so they want to see just an actual match between the two of them. When is it going to happen? We don't know yet. Well, under what circumstances is going to happen, we still don't know yet. But at least they're going to prolong this feud a little bit. And that's fine because yeah. I think like Edge has like two more years. It's like it's a three year contract. It's actually nine appearances per year. That's what like the stipulations is like supposed to be like. Nine, it's not nine matches, it's nine appearances at least every year. Yeah. So, like, so that's know, at he, least. That's at least. He could have more than nine if he wants to, but they he has to have at least nine. Yes, yes. Is they always cannot. It's the same thing with Brock yeah. Lesnar. If they feel like, for example, why were these two guys? Why were these two guys brought in for ratings? Is mm -hmm. just the main reason. Is just like yeah. because they were not originally scheduled to be in the show, but like they feel that the ratings are bad. So of course they had to pull up a you know story between them. It's like okay, let's prolong the situation, and it's fine because mm -hmm. if they if they want to give us a wrestling match, that's fine. Because yeah, I mean, I do watch. think I do think this should have happened eventually. I know, like, if they did bring them in early or whatever because of ratings, you know, that's fine. But I do think this should have happened eventually because that couldn't have been – it could have been the blow-off to the feud, but I would have liked to see these two actual – like, you know, have a legit match, like we said. Now, I don't know if they're going to drag this out to SummerSlam. I don't know – or, you know, what's the next pay-per-view coming up? That's a long time, so – you know, whatever pay per views next, if that's you know, if it is extreme rules, if that's what the blow off's gonna be, I mean, maybe that's where they do a lot. I mean, that'd be more TLC, but maybe I mean, you still do a ladder match. I don't know, you do something, but what would that make sense? What are they climbing for? You know, so I don't know what they're gonna do. But, I would say I mean, it's a traditional I, yeah, singles match, but but I'm, I'm ex but I mean, I'm excited for it, you know, regardless, because I think it'll be probably the best. It was the best thing on Monday Night Raw leading into WrestleMania, so I don't see why it won't continue being the best thing. And maybe they forward. can finally incorporate Christian because, you know, that's, mm. that's been the last the last piece in the whole story. Maybe we'll see. Especially uh, if I you would do a... Uh, now, I'm not saying you want to have Edge be the underdog and everything, but especially if you'd have Christian turn heel on him. Yeah, and that will be fine. But, like, there's been many reports that Christian does not want to be involved in the ring anymore. He said he's done. He's like, my body can hold it anymore. We're going against... Uh, the line of like my body broke down already, mm -hmm. but we'll see what they do. And I you know what? If that's the case, you know I re I respect my you know I'm a peep, so I respect it. Yeah, exactly. Like so, if they want to do something with these guys yet, it's fine. I feel that like they still can give us a good match, and that will be probably the end. And then probably Edge can start going into a championship like material. That's just because you know you're not gonna come back if you just not go after gold. 
Oh, I yeah. Say, he probably wants to be champion one more time. Yeah, I was gonna say, he's definitely going to have one more run. There's no way. Yeah, I mean, so it might like, be a, a one-month title reign, but he's going to have one, one yeah, more. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's not going to have a long title reign, but at least, yeah. you know, one more like you know, one more run with gold. So pretty much that's what sums it up for Monday Night Raw, John Paul. Like you said, a good show. Overall, every single segment was, you know, semi-decent. It was like... Yeah, I would things. say, yeah, I would say besides the Street Profits, you know, whatever... Everything else you could at least, you know, was at least tolerable, if not pretty good. Yeah, and, you know, we got Asuka. Asuka was pretty good. You know, that was a good stuff. The Iconics coming back, it was not bad. You know, McIntyre, like, being looking dominant, that was still not bad. You know, Rey Mysterio with, like, the thing with Seth Rollins, that was good because at mm-hmm. least Rollins, you were giving him a more edge. Yeah, Rey Mysterio coming back from the dead, and then same with Aleister Black, and then Rey Mysterio loses an eye. So it's like, dude, might as well just stay dead. And that, that's what they do with Rey Mysterio. His contract yeah. is about to expire soon. So I don't know if he's going to renew it. If he doesn't, I mean, we'll all be sad because Rey's Rey Mysterio. But in the end, hey, he deserves better. I would say, I mean, he deserves, he de- he definitely deserves better. But at his age and everything, clearly he can still go. But I don't think you could, you know, use him like you did, you know, 2006, you know, like that time period when he was younger. So this role, I, I don't think is that bad for him. He does deserve better, but I think if he would go to AEW or a place like that, I don't know how much better they would use him because they're not yeah. going to make him a champion. He would kind of still be in the same role mid-card. He'd get some wins, but in the end, he'd be used to get people over. So I, I hope he stays in WWE, um, but wherever he goes, I'll definitely watch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what they will do with him. So, family, this wraps it up for Monday Night Raw Review today. And don't forget to, like, for the new people that are checking us out, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell for all the notifications every single day of the week. We have new content, and we try to put, like, every single day, like, memes, news, and in the social media. So, Jean-Paul, remind us, where are we located in, you know, social media? Facebook, the original rope, or, yeah, the original rope break. Instagram also, same thing, the original rope break. Twitter the OG rope break. And then we have YouTube for the meat and the potatoes to fill your bellies, you know, right here on YouTube, the original rope break. Exactly. So that's when you can watch every single one of the videos. Don't forget to catch up. If you didn't watch the money in the bank, right? There's the review right there is like the previous and predictions. If you want to know what did we think about him? And then like our reactions towards the pay-per-view. So everything is right there for you guys. So Jean Paul, you and me have one more thing that is left to say. And that is, uh, 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 uh.